Please note, this is just a review of the final work and not an endorsement of the creator. Any opinion or prior action belonging to the creator involved, unless otherwise stated, are not factors in this review. Thank you and enjoy! Hey guys, Starcraft here, and like I said, I'm going to try and get, in my tweet, I'm going to try and get through so many of those thumbnail videos as I can. Again, and since the interview is one of those, that means that will get done eventually. But before then, I'm going to go over something that's a bit of a breezy one. Well, breezy in some, in only so many regards. And that was Scott Collins, Solomon Grundy's um, series. Starting from the Faces of Evil one shot into the seven issue, um into the seven issue miniseries and then the two issue um superman batman crossover that tied into black as night what is all this about well scott uh well except for the very the one shot where jeff johns co-wrote it scott collins is a fan of monsters and what better monster does dc have than um and then solomon grundy and then and just to make out of the way and because they're all on the covers anyway, the whole r rhyme is Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday, Christian on Tuesday, married on Wednesday, took ill on Thursday, grew worse on Friday, died on Saturday, and buried on Sunday. That's what the whole thing's been about was Solomon Grundy. And he's always been an interesting villain. Oh, and able to die, being a zombie that can die, one of those few cases where you can kill him off, because he'll just come back anyway, because he's not really alive. Although, when he comes back, he comes back with a different personality. Sometimes he's malevolent, sometimes he's more malevolent, sometimes he's intelligent, etc., etc. But this, basically, it was designed in universe, it's been decided that he has, and it is time to. To uh, fix, take care of Solomon Grundy, take care of Cyrus Gold, and basically um, determine once and for all his origin and can he be redeemed. As we, well, we open up with, I've overread this so much of the covers off. We, we open up with his origin, which was basically he was stabbed by, murdered by someone, fell into the swamp, and eventually transformed into the big, huge, hulking behemoth, Solomon Grundy. And he's then thinking back to when he went through different, um, 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 what he remembered. I remember, a, I remember rising from the rotten swamp, the water and slime sliding off of my up white skin and seeping into open so uh, sores. He then basically, like, um... He brings up, like, I saw a yellow light, soft and welcoming, like the one who bore it. But it only made me weak. And again, I felt death. I saw someone called Batman and a scientist named Woodrow, a creature once known as Holland. Then I remember finally sinking, plotting as I once did. Obsessed with survival, plans absurd and impossible. Referencing how he was in, um... During um, the J and Brad Meltzer JLA run, when he was actually smart, he was tired of dying, and he was ready to put himself, you know, take up being immortal from um, 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 oh, what was his name? Just a moment. From um, um. Oh, come on. So I remember the creator's name. The guy who created Amazo. Um, was that Ivo? Yeah, Professor Ivo. If I'm wrong, I'll, cor I'll fix it. I'll correct myself later. He was going to swap his immortality with him. Um, and be put inside the Red Tornado's body. But even then, he died. And then during Blackest Night, he got fried by Superboy Prime. And thus, this was his next resurrection after that. As, but this time, he wakes up as Cyrus Gold. Completely confused as what's going on. He then takes a fish from the water and eats it. And then he goes into the, um, 
and goes into town, finds a, um, yeah, finds you know, a guy in a mobile home and he kills him. I believe he, t and, uh, um, yeah, he starts just looking around, adjusting to everything because this is the first time it's been actually Cyrus himself in control, not Grundy. As, um, he and goes into town, as we're seeing a moment of him meeting up with his uncle, who he took his coat and then shot him and killed him. <laughs> he wants everything off his back. And he's actually showing some remorse. Then he starts hearing the, um, um, all the ramblings of the, the rhyme. And then a woman comes up to him, trying to be apologetic, but then brings up about she's being religious and God fills our, our, our halls and our hearts. To which that causes Cyrus to snap and attack her and then attack others until he's eventually he is until he's shot, runs down the street, and is killed by a car. Eventually then in the morgue, um, it comes evening as he reforms into Solomon Grundy. Yep. Not even he is pretty much immortal as he eventually just throughout the whole week trashes the city until he even has a run-in with Killer Croc the two scuffling and fighting it out until eventually um yeah he takes out um um yeah he takes out Croc by ripping his mouth open not killing him but taking him out until sunlight in the morning comes and he eventually collapses becoming Cyrus again and we find out the Phantom Stranger and um, and the and Alan Scott Green Lantern are there to try and help redeem him. Alan not being sure of it. And that was the end of the one shot. Now obviously you need the one shot to lead into the ongoing. It's not a case where the ongoing is self-contained. As well, the on, the ongoing opens up first with um um. Uh, Angels like uh, Zoriel are dealing with a bunch of demons. Yeah, weird way, of, but well, the demon fell and it had died while fighting on Earth. And its blood is what eventually turned into the Slaughter Swamp, which is where, of course, Solomon Grundy was born. So, yeah, as we then see, um, um, Cyrus is running, just trying to get away from Pam Stranger. Knocks um, the guy, this guy over, and he hits his head and kills him. To which um, he just keeps on running until he falls into a into a hole, where it turns out his dad decided every year I'm gonna bury you and see if you can dig your way out. Jesus. And Alan is basically like, he killed a man. I am not gonna let him do it. Um, uh, yeah, you know, like he killed a man, another man, and he has killed countless of others. I am, but basically, um, Fam Stranger is basically saying, uh, this is a chance to bring an end to Solomon Grundy if we do this. And basically, it's one of those cases where Cyrus, can he be redeemed when he's done such monstrous things? And if he can't, and because he's approaching Black as Night, which Alan doesn't question, what does he mean by that? Unless he does it beforehand, he will be lost forever. As then, um, Cyrus is thinking back to the old days that he watched um, his father getting killed by accident by a um, um, yeah, a dock accident. Yeah. As he's eventually making his way. Oh, sorry. As he uh, gets done, he and goes into the swamp, and Alan goes underwater. But while he's gone, a bunch of and crocodiles or alleg no alligators come from the swamp, and well, they eat him up. But then, come Monday evening, all um, his different body parts rip their way out of the croc and the alligators until they all slither together and reform into Solomon Grundy, and then he is being attacked by a mon a demon. And that demon is, of course, Etrigan. As he just starts attacking him, he's saying, I, uh, ah, the delight of a worthy fight. 
Yeah, the rhyming. <laughs> As, yeah, they tussle around, and they tussle around until, um... It, yeah, their fight causes a tank to blow up and destroying a bridge. And then it ends with where we see Bizarro. Yep. Then we lead into issue number two, where um, we're seeing Cyrus committing murder. Yeah. And someone nearby cackling saying, yes, first kill. As Etrigan and Grundy are still fighting it out. Um, until eventually Etrigan gets the win and then um, and then uh, Al is able to finally distract him long enough for Grundy to get away. Eventually Cyrus climbs back up and um, hold on. Oh, we find out that turns out after what happened to his father, he was still at the docks when this young this man gives him his hand, saying, "You will work for me until." Uh, uh, that basically saying, "I will offer you. You want riches and power? Work for me, and you have it all." But you will work for me until you die. Yeah. Then, um, um. Yeah, he's starting to have a bit more of a hallucination. Now he's back in the swamp seeing all of these red knives. Until he's eventually, um, inside a, um, a, inside a gar uh, garbage um, truck and a, gar and a garbage dump. And he gets crushed by one of the metal, the magnets. Eventually, he gets his way out, and yeah, he makes his way inward. When all of a sudden, Bizarro shows up. Me no, and me no like free. Go away. Uh, yeah. Basically, then Bizarro just takes a liking to Grundy, and Grundy's like, "Hey, hands off!" As they start fighting. Uh, big time. They really... This is a great fight, actually. But then it ends with them landing in a um, garden where a fire fire lands at Bizarre's hand. The two starts laughing like idiots. Bizarre, they end up just sitting on the roof. Um, Bizarre brings a, a hot dog cart and they eat it up and eat and just be good friends until morning comes and, well, uh, Solomon Grunny turns back into uh, Cyrus. Bizarre's like, where Grundy? Flies off. And then we see a bunch of plants as the next issue, Poison Ivy, shows up. And in this one, we're seeing now as um, Cyrus, way back when, would be burying um, people and you know, his victims in the swamp, um, including his own mother. And then um, he starts to get haunted by all the different people that he have killed. Whether or not they became Grundy's or not, I don't know. But basically, the garden they created, Grundy and Bizarre Christian was Ivy's. And she's taunting I, um, Cyrus. Um, ready, and I'm pretty sure ready to kill him even. Or not make him under her control, as always. And then we go to a, um, to a flashback. As we're seeing um, him uh, and with Cyrus meeting up with an old fl uh, flame who um, at, at her husband's funeral. I believe that she had, and he had killed her and then I uh, killed him. And then years later they married and yeah, it was a bad relationship. Their kids were not happy about it at all. And, and that, that he's thinking back to about loss in his life. And this was married on Wednesday, so yeah. Then all of a sudden, he reverts back into Grundy. As, um... Oh, wait, nope, not yet. That he's not Grundy yet, but he's in I he is. Then he transforms into Grundy, and starts to at and then she starts to attack him. It seems like they're going back and forth between, um... Actually, I can't tell if this is really happening or if it's symbolic where he's acting like Grundy, but yeah, finally ends with his touch. The deaths from Slaughter Swamp kills all the plants. 
and Danny finally kisses her, leaving her a wizard as well. Never referenced, but yeah, poor Ivy. We then cut back to um, Gotham City, City Suburbia. You remember Alan Scott's from Gotham City? He's charging up his ring as his wife, he kisses his wife Molly goodbye as he flies off. Grundy then, um, you know, he is taunted, but he's like, Grundy never saves, only kills, etc. Until then, he sees um, um, a reflection of Pearl, indicating that she, that he killed her as well. Then, um, the series and the water starts to fill up as he drowns. He then starts smashing around um, as Grundy again, destroying stuff, until he then realizes where Alan Scott has, um, has, uh, has left, and he smashes into the house. Issue 4, oh, uh, took ill on Thursday, has him basically smashed through the Scott's household. Molly even trying to shoot him to what good it did. Then Grundy finds the power battery and he smashes it. Just for unleashing all of his energy as Alan comes in to try and stop him. But it's too late as his power battery is destroyed. Then we see as uh, Cyrus is getting, um, he's all alone now as he's hearing, you know, hearing words saying, you had your fail, no more delay. Which indicates that the person he made to deal with was probably the devil. And that is now his time, all of his, after all of his riches, it's time for him to die. As Alan gets his wife out of there, um, they're wondering, you know, like they're saying, like the power, you know, like even the rings, like farewell, Green Lantern. As then we go to Professor, uh, uh, yeah, Professor, um, Professor Ivo, oh, I'm pretty sure that's who it is, he then finds the swamp and drops a humanoid container there. Grundy makes his way back to the swamp, and um, he's reverted back to being Cyrus that morning until he is shot by something. Now he's bleeding, mostly because of the magic. He eventually finally finds his murder weapon, which... I should have mentioned earlier, that was the task. Find the murder weapon, find his killer, forgive his killer. So yeah, he finally finds the knife. As the fam stranger tells him what will end his curse. And, but he's like, he doesn't know who killed him. He doesn't know why, and like it could have been anyone. But, no. No, and no, no, no one from his past killed him. Like all of them, everyone hated him. He, they all wanted to keep that, uh, a piece of him. Then all of a sudden, though, that thing that came by was a maze of, as he starts destroying the swamp. In issue five, grew worse on Friday. We're then seeing as um, Grundy, uh, Cyrus is being haunted by the Reaper as he's running until he makes it to the swamp, hearing a laughter. Then Alan Scott starts to, well, he feels a presence there. He has to concentrate. As Grundy is now dealing with a Mazo attacking. Putting up a good fight actually as he rips off Mazo's head. But then Mazo starts to reform itself and absorb the properties of the swamp. Doing what he to Grundy what he would normally do to the league. And um eventually he becomes Amazo Grundy as they are starting to both fight each other hard. And we basically find out that um Yeah that Ivo is doing all this because he doesn't want to be immortal anymore. His body is so full of diseases and everything that's so painful. So he basically feels like uh yeah, but after Ivo it's like um Basically they are they partnered, he promised to cure him of it. But nothing happened, and now he's going to make sure that he's going to be immortal. He's going to make sure Grundy you know, suffers. So he will curse him forever, I and mean, he will attack him, kill him every time. Amazo will kill you every time you come back, again and again for all eternity. Then at the same time, we're seeing Bizarro being attacked by, um, captured by, um, um, Shade. That's the organization that Frankenstein works for. Meanwhile, Alan repairs his lantern. It's magic, so it makes more sense. Then the swamp attacks Amazo and pulls him under. 
not knowing what's going on, but eventually he's been found out, and, um, yeah, so, um, Shade, yeah, Shade was able to find him, and amaze, and Ivo, and capture him. Then we start seeing, um, um, Uh, he doesn't expect the specter who else will be involved. As we then see, um, um, finally started starting to make sense out of everything. Saying like, I was wealthy and respected. Not true. I was murdered by those who feared and coveted my goal. Not true. This is not me. This is not how it happened. As he's realizing now, no, I wasn't any of that. None of that was true. That was what he wanted to think. Then, um, um, finally... Frankenstein shows up, ready to take him down. We then do died on Saturday as, well, Cyrus wakes up on a shade ship and attacks everyone. Until he falls down and gets impaled. I can't catch a break, can he? Until, of course, he turns into Grundy again. Again, this whole thing is about monster mash. As he's attacking everyone, um, Alan's talking with the power battery again as, um, yeah. Scrunny keeps on getting blasted to pieces, but because of his nature and because he's in the swamp, he keeps on reforming. But every time Grundy is, got, is, done, is down, Cyrus starts to think again, starts to realize, like, what, what happened, and he starts realizing about the devil. And he thinks he got stabbed. Then Bizarro fly, you know, flies in and helps, you know, takes out Frankenstein, helping his friend. Uh, but then Alan shows up as well, and Grundy's not happy as they, he bangs on it. Which I might add, Grundy was introduced with Alan Scott, so this all makes sense. Then, um, Frankenstein stabs right through uh, Grundy. The same time that Cyrus is remembering when he was stabbed. Um, eventually, oh, using some, a bunch of, um, like the, the mystical sword, it takes out Grundy as he... Well, he is dying. And I love how Bizarro, like, enemy, instead of friend. And Bizarro then turns to dust as he just whisks away. Bizarro then, and not Bizarro, Grundy does. Bizarro and Shade all leave. But then, um, but then they have one more day left. Because, yeah, he had a whole week to do all this. One more day. Then we get into Buried on Sunday, which ties into Blackest Night, so you unfortunately have an idea where this is going. And we're basically saying how, and seeing how Grundy, after going through everything, he finally comes up one more time, his last chance. As um, he's whacked around by the mental image of Grundy, seeing all these different people, um, but he's like, you, uh, you don't think you've done this? to yourself, then Etrigan shows up. He wants to make sure that they run out of time. So they're all attacking um, and, they, and uh, he starts attacking him. Basically saying how there's no reason to stop the fun in these last moments before your last setting sun. Your time is nearly over, my friend, and your destiny is at an end. To which, of course, Green Lantern saying like, no, you're not gonna ruin his chance at a redemption. And uh, um, he holds Etrigan down. As he then starts to um, realize what was going on. Like, I was a thief. I was a murderer. The swamp was my ally. An alley. But the swamp frightened me. I, rene uh, I was tormented by my sin. I reneged on the bargain. I would not be murdered like some commoner. Like those I had killed and dumped here. They would not get me. Yeah. So he finally realizes he committed, he killed himself. Now the big question is now, does he forgive himself? And he starts to get taunted. And then, yeah, he's just like, no, never wanted, no, no, not my fault, no. Unfortunately, he runs out of time. He doesn't, he, he didn't not, um, you know, do it, but the fact that he didn't do it at all, Never is just is proof enough. As Cyrus Gold is pulled into the swamp to be tortured in hell for eternity. Solomon Grunny can reform, but he will be an empty husk. So Alan, feeling fine with that, flies off. 
as a black lantern ring goes into the water and resurrects Grunty's hut. Ending the miniseries and then leading into Superman Batman number 66 and 67. As we get a repeat of that, of all that happened and Grundy reforming as a black lantern. Which makes sense as he was always a zombie. Now, because of the Superman Batman, Superman's equipment is obviously bizarro. Batman's is man bat, but man bat's ties in this is not really worth it. It's just there just for the, fit the requirement. Because throughout all of it, it's basically Kirk's wife once again trying to give him a cure. He almost takes it in circumstances causing him to revert back. Yeah. I mean, great artwork still with him, but there's really no point to all this other than to stretch things out a bit. But the real star of the course is Bizarro. Trying to, like, he want, he want enemies, meaning he wants friends. But, of course, people don't get it. As, uh, you know, the other reason why Kirk is involved, Kirk is involved, is because his, uh, his wife is working with uh, Shay to try and bring him down and help him. So, he's, yeah, he basically, is, she's basically trying to stop him, talk him and calm him down. I love this with Frank and his wife. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? <laughs> they used to be, a, they, and they're exes. And, but he's still interested and she's all like, oh, brother. And then we're seeing uh, Bizarro at the same time. He really likes um, monsters as well. He doesn't want Kirk to revert back to normal. So he starts attacking. He's like, he wants more monsters. But then as they tussle, Bizarro shows up. And eh, not Bizarro. I mix up. Grundy shows up. Black Lantern Grundy. Solomon Grundy kills all monsters. To which Bizarro's all happy, like, oh, Brian, you back. Grundy's like, you don't touch. You think we're friends? He decks him. Like, you stupid monster. We were never friends. You will always be alone. Now, as the issue ends with, um, um, yeah, his wife giving, uh, uh, giving him the cure, offering Kirk the cure, while Grun and Bizarre, and Grundy's about to rip out Bizarro's heart. Now we end all this with Black is and Batman, Superman, Batman number sixty-seven. As Bizarro's remembering everything that happened, how his about how his friend and everything, he's remembering it all. We get a little bit of a flashback to everything. As yeah, Grundy's about to kill Bizarro when. Frankenstein comes, interferes, and basically they all tussle, all the wild stuff going, the stuff going with Kirk and his wife are going on, it's, she's trying to calm down, Man Bat says Man Bat will not die, you still have Grundy continue to slam into uh, Frankenstein, uh, and I like how he actually sends this love from both Frankenstein and his wife, um, uh, again, it's just a monster fight still, until, like I said, you have Kirk revert to normal, is about to take the cure when his wife get, and Francine gets shot by ricochets off of Bizarro, causing him to transform again, knock Francine aside. Meanwhile, then, um, uh, Frankenstein's wife is about to be killed by Grundy when then, um, Frankenstein charges and Grundy grabs him and rips his heart right out, seemingly killing him. Then Bizarro looks at Frankenstein's bride and thinks he sees Lois and realizing this is, you know, like, no, no. So what does he do? He flies at Bizarro, grabs, uh, uh, grabs him and flies him into space while Kirk is once again distraught by what he had done. And then uh, Bizarro throws Grundy right into the sun. Meanwhile, um, Frankenstein's bride is all, yeah, about time you show up. But turns out he's still alive. He has a second heart. And she actually feels, you know, re uh, re uh, relief for all of it. I love how he's like, doesn't hurt that much. I lost both my hearts to, to you a long time ago. All right, take it easy, lover boy. We have a lot of paperwork to fill out. As we see... Kirk fly off, man bat fly off, Bizarro fly off, saying like, hello, Solomon Grundy, meeting by, of course. Francine is still alive, but it ends on such a bittersweet note, but yeah, 
That's the Sullivan Grundy story. I liked it. Artwork by Scott Collins is really good. And there was a lot of detail and salt put into a lot of this. And But it's also just a great monster bash. I do like how with Grundy and Cyrus, you're like, he is a scum. But a lot of stuff was dealt with some bad hands. He made a deal with the devil trying to keep the riches he had. And unfortunately, it just made him worse and worse and worse. Until finally, by the end, he fell back into a corner. But he was still an evil man in the end. So, yeah. I liked it. If you guys can ever find the trades for it, get it. And that's all I really have to say. Catch you guys later.